So fresh out of college, I thought that I'm going to work in an office and, and be at a desk and in front of a computer screen and maybe it'll be boring and whatever. But like I, I've read all these textbooks and I know exactly what it is that I'm going to be doing and how I'm going to do it. Wrong. <laughs> Just flat out wrong. What I missed in the transition from student to work was the middle piece of how do I get to know the company that I'm in? How do I get to know what they do? How do I understand what they do? Because I just thought, okay, well, they'll tell me, I'll read a pamphlet, uh, I'll read a book, I'll watch a video, whatever it is, like the typical YouTube generation, right? Nothing was as impactful as the six weeks that I spent in production. I actually got to help with manufacturing. Uh, I actually got to be on a line and work the shift that they worked. I actually got to load trucks and uh, take deliveries out with a delivery driver and do service calls. The things that I worked on, they didn't actually put in anyone's house, <laughs> but they let me do it. Um, and the people that were working in the warehouse and in production and delivery and service, they were so wonderful about teaching me what those products were and how they fit together and what that means for the place that it's going and how the delivery process works. The tiny little things that, that go on behind the scenes of, of building a home that I had no idea took place. I just thought a door is a door and you hang up a door. There's so much complexity behind that and so much expertise that goes with that that I never understood or appreciated until I got to be in that position. Why is that important for what we do? Uh, it's not just about appreciation, though you should really appreciate what all of the employees do in your company, uh, regardless of where they are. The big piece to understanding that and having an appreciation for that and actually being able to see it and physically be a part of it. As much as I hated being in a warehouse because it was the middle of summer when I started at that company and there was no air conditioning because it was wood products and all of this stuff. I have curly hair and I like my makeup and my heels and whatever. As much as that just wasn't who I was, it influenced who I became ultimately as an HR manager, as an HR person. I always, to this day, uh, and it's been a long time since that happened, to this day have the people that were in those positions in my head when I'm writing a policy or a procedure or putting together a training or development. I have to think about how does this impact their day job? How does this impact their ability to have a work-life balance? How does this impact their safety, their wellness? How does this impact the, the hard work that they're doing? Do I really want to bring them in after their shift is over for training on harassment? Or are they just going to fall asleep? It changed everything that I thought that I was going to be doing. Uh, for the better. It's not just writing a policy or procedure or or training or developing. It's not just about, like, I have all of this compliance to do. It's so much bigger than just HR's here for compliance and HR's here for rules and regulations and making sure people follow those. Um, it's also about making sure that they make sense for the employees that you actually have, making sure that you apply it the way that it works for that company and that business. I believe that that's only truly possible if you have a full and complete understanding of what your company does to make money, spend money, and what every employee is responsible for. I'm never going to be called upon to go fix something or build something, but I know the gist of what they do because I physically got to see it. If we're ever in any kind of litigation and someone is talking through, okay, talk through this process with me, I can speak somewhat educated about the process, uh, about what they are supposed to do and how it works and what happens next. And, and that happens with workers comp, that happens with uh, a number of things that you need to understand the basics of everything. I'm not an expert <laughs> about any of those things. I don't claim to be, I will never be. 
but I have a basic understanding of the production processes at the companies that I work at. I have a basic understanding of the delivery processes, the receiving processes of the customer service processes, and even further accounts payable, accounts receivable, payroll. I was very lucky in that first position that they exposed me to everything. And I know not everybody is that lucky. I know not everybody has that uh, kind of flexibility within a company because that takes time away from what they brought you in for. I believe that you'll be better at whatever it is that your role is within the company if you understand the full cycle of the company. It's not too late. If you've already been in HR for a few years, uh, if you're in a company that you've been there as their HR manager for a while, um, for you to take a little bit of time, it doesn't have to be six weeks, it doesn't have to be months, maybe it's an hour a week. There's no right or wrong way to get started on something like this. If you are in a position that you're incredibly busy, you've been there for a while and you don't have time uh, to get to know everyone at every level, just trust me, you're doing yourself harm. Make 30 minutes a week that you spend that 30 minute chunk uh, in production, in delivery, in receiving, in accounting, and dedicate some time to every department within your company. The one thing that we talk about in HR a lot, but it's never really explained properly, is business acumen. Understanding your business and how it works and operates. Maybe someone's not gonna teach you. Maybe you're a department of one, or maybe HR is not really HR. Maybe you're more of an office manager that has a little sprinkling of HR. Maybe this is an opportunity for you to build a trainee program that this is how they get introduced to the company. Think about your current position. How would that have changed and been impacted had you had that in the beginning? There's no such thing as too much education and too much exposure into what your company does. You just have to be honest and open about it. You don't wanna just show up at a department. (laughs) Okay, Um, especially if you're currently in an HR role, um, you, you could scare the crap out of people. (laughs) If they're not used to seeing you, if they're not used to seeing HR unless there's a training going on or a party or whatever it is, um, don't just show up. Let people know you're coming. Let people know what your intention is. Be very honest with people about it. Um, I would strongly encourage that you, you have a boss. Everyone does. Tell your boss what your idea is, what you wanna do. Think it out, plan it out, share it with them, and then make sure if you have several levels of managers that those managers understand. It's not to change what they're doing. It's not to audit what they're doing. It's very important that you share that because people get a little nervous about HR. Um, It's so that you learn. It's for your development. It's for your growth. It's so that you can support them better because at the end of the day, we are a support function and we can't support something that we don't even understand how it operates. You can read a ton of stuff online, but it's not the same as how your particular company does its job. Um, And I promise you, you will have such a better relationship with your employees if they see you. Even if it's 30 minutes a week that you spend time in in those different departments, let them know. Uh, Let them know what your intentions are and then follow through. I will never forget those employees. I will never forget those days. I will never forget the safety vest that I had to wear that clearly stated new person. Uh, none of that. Because that those little embarrassments, those little things that I'm like, oh, I look like a dummy. Um, those little moments. I wasn't so nervous about coming into this new company. I wasn't so uh, nervous about coming into a new industry because I, I understood it then at that point because they allowed me to see the whole thing. Even though I was never gonna be in those departments, they knew how important that was. Go through this process yourself, see the benefit in it, see the value in it. This type of getting your hands dirty is training and development. And uh, if you are anything like I was when I first started uh, in HR a very long time ago, uh, even before I, I got into the industry that I'm in now, 
I was brought in to do a job. No one really talked to me about my development. Um, that just wasn't what we talked about then. And I didn't really have a full respect for how important that was. I didn't take ownership over my development. I didn't take ownership over my training and what I needed because I didn't know what I didn't know. And then I was brought into this industry and I had a wonderful manager. I won't say his name because I don't want to embarrass him, but he changed my future without even knowing it by forcing me to get my hands dirty, by putting me in production in this uh, bright safety vest that made me laugh every time I put it on and hard hats that messed up my hair for the day. Um, And out in the field when it was 100 degrees outside with my makeup melting off. (laughs) And I probably complained to him a couple of times. He'd bring me into his office and talk to me about my experiences that day. Um, And it wasn't a test, it wasn't a quiz. So if, if you're developing this program for your company, be very, very mindful of this particular part. He was never trying to prove that I was paying attention or prove that um, I I was going to be a good fit or good employee. It was, talk to me about your day. What was it like? And I had all of these questions and he was wonderful in taking the time to answer my questions uh, and knew how important it was that I had a full understanding of these processes to make me a well-rounded employee. I don't believe that I would be where I am today without that, without that foundation Um, and without that manager, to be completely honest. But that's a time for uh, another another video where we talk about bad and good managers. Be willing to get your hands dirty. Be willing to do things that make you uncomfortable. I am so grateful and so appreciative that that was part of my upbringing in this industry the things that I have been able to accomplish with policies and making sure that the employees are front and center in those. I was always able to make sure that my hippie HR brand had employees front and center because I understood what the employees were doing with their time. Be willing to get your hands dirty. Be willing to do all of the jobs that you ask the employees to do. The worst thing that you could do is allow there to be an opinion that HR is above doing whatever that, that job is, that task is, because we're not. We are a support function. We are not here to run the universe. We are here to support it. How do you support something that you don't understand how to do? You don't have to be an expert, but be willing to get in there to at least get foundational understanding of what, what your people do all day. The best way that we can do that is by understanding our business by getting our hands dirty.